Let's bring back Tim Westhoff. I had him on for the first time uh, last week. He was good. That's why I'm bringing him back. And uh, I love what he has to say on Facebook in particular. You just find him at Timothy, in that case. Timothy, not Tim. Westhoff on Facebook. Uh, he has the nice, bald, shiny head on there. I think there are a couple Tim Westhoffs on there. Uh, <laughs> all right. So, Tim, welcome back. You passed your test the first time. Let's uh, talk about, well, the news of the day. First of all, if you have any insights into Houston that people can't find on the Weather Channel, I guess. Well, first off, uh, good to uh, talk to you again, Adam, my favorite person from Florida, which I miss. Well, I'm not um, from Florida. I'm in Florida. I'm from Pennsylvania, and you can probably hear it in my voice, but uh, I think... Uh, yeah. You're right. You're correct. <laughs> you're, you're correct. I, I uh, stand corrected on that. My apologies. Actually, originally I, uh, I'm from Wichita Falls, Texas, but I only lived there for like nine months. Went to New York for a while and was pretty much a Pennsylvania resident by the time I was two or three. Uh, but that's another story. My dad was just in his medical training in the Air Force, you know, all that. Sorry, I cut you gotcha. off. <laughs> no worries. Needless to say, I won't, I won't uh, use up any of my time to go into the uh, travels with Tim because that's a, a substantially longer story. Um, in any case, uh, I, the first thing I just kind of wanted to mention today is is uh, this in no mean uh, shape or form does this uh, disrespect, obviously, with his number, uh, priority number one out there for everybody, which is the ongoing, uh, struggles, the tragedy and, and fallout from Harvey, uh, in Houston, which is now also going to be affecting, uh, New Orleans and, and that surrounding area. And obviously that is important and, and key to be on the forefront of everybody's mind and, and hopefully, uh, the support that, um, uh, is coming in from all over the country will continue. And Texans are showing themselves, uh, even though to be uh, from the Lone Star State, uh, are clearly not alone. And uh, I think uh, I, I don't want to, you know, discount the importance of that. However, having said all of that, I, I believe wholeheartedly that the most single important story to come out today uh, was, in fact, that uh, Mr. David Hardy, Mm-hmm. Who is the sec? Who is the uh, section chief for records information and dissemination, uh, otherwise known as RIDS, at the uh, Federal Bureau of Investigation, has denied a Freedom of Information Act, otherwise known as an FOIA, from a New York attorney by the name of Ty Glovinger. Uh-huh. Now, Mr. Mr. Glovinger filed the FOIA requesting a complete release of the emails that have been uncovered by the FBI that uh, were part of the 33,000 destroyed by Hillary, as well as all investigative files relating to the Hillary Clinton case and email scandal. And uh, Mr. Hardy concluded, he denied the request by Mr. Clevenger, concluding that there was insufficient public interest to warrant the request. Says who? Um, How many requests? I mean, that might be the biggest interest of any request they've received in years. Who says this? Well, this may be the single greatest example of how deep the swamp is. Mm-hmm. And the, the fact of the matter is that uh, neither the president nor the citizenry is going to have much success in draining the swamp unless that drainage begins with the DOJ and the FBI itself. And uh, it, interestingly, as a part and parcel of this story today, former House uh, chairman of the Oversight Committee, Ms. Uh, Representative Jason Chavitz from Utah, mm-hmm. was, on, was on Fox today. And I, I strongly encourage your listeners to pull that interview up. Uh, he even went over the fact of how bureaucratic and red tape the whole process is, that even as chairman, of the Oversight Committee, he could not walk over, despite having all the clearances, and, and et cetera, he could not walk over to the FBI and demand those records. And and the, the importance for your listeners to understand, again, about this, why this is all important, mm-hmm. if we go back, and, and you have to kind of, like, connect the obvious dots here that exist. Okay, Mr. Hardy is obviously... Uh, a senior level bureaucrat at the FBI. We understand the former director, Mr. Comey's ties to former DOJ uh, uh, Attorney General 
uh, Loretta Lynch, uh-huh. and we we know that Lynch instructed Comey to call the Hillary investigation a matter, uh-huh. quote unquote, yep. not not an investigation. We know that Lynch totally inappropriately met with President former President Clinton on the tarmac in Phoenix uh-huh. uh, while his wife was under investigation. Also totally disturbing and legally inappropriate. But to go back to the core elements of the 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 aspects of Hillary Clinton's email servers and devices, people have to again make sure they understand this. That Hillary Clinton was under a subpoena from the United States Congress mm-hmm. to turn over the thirty three thousand emails to turn over the devices and to turn over uh, the server. It was after receipt of that subpoena that her, well, I should say her staff, under her instruction, destroyed 33,000 emails, bleached the hard drive, and Mm -hmm. smashed, hammer smashed the devices. Now, for anybody who wants to know... Total disregard for the law. Total disregard for the law. I just had to comment something there. Oh, oh yeah, with, no, with complete and total disregard for the law, to which if any of us, you, me, or any of citizen, were to have done the same thing, mm-hmm. there, are, there are two aspects legally to this. First off, in, 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 in the federal statutes, it's under uh, U.S. Code 18, subsection 2705, it becomes a matter of obstruction of justice. Mm-hmm. Now, obstruct, obstruction of justice under the federal statutes is pen, punishable by up to five years in federal prison. Okay, that's number one. Number two is it is legally uh, uh, accepted throughout the system, be it the federal courts or the state courts or what have you, that any suspect or defendant who destroys evidence under subpoena Mm-hmm. Is or and actually even destroys evidence that's not under subpoena. But just if it could be proven that that individual, once they came under suspicion or investigation, destroyed evidence, that that could be introduced in a court of law as an admission of guilt. Yep. And so what we have here is Hillary and her minions essentially admitting guilt yeah. from a legal standpoint, and then in a further standpoint, actually violating the statutes of obstruction of justice under the federal codes and and subjected to it. Now, Mr. Hardy is independently here, uh, again, being part of that swamp. Mm-hmm. Uh, and obviously, you know, we're talking about his whole, uh, his old boss being part and parcel of this whole process, mm-hmm. along with the collusion. Everybody likes the word collusion lately. Obviously, that's the big buzzword. Yeah. Uh, um, but we're not using it enough with regards to the Comey-Lynch collusion, along with colluding with Obama, along with colluding with Hillary, who is the very person and subject of the investigation. Yeah. What do we and, know about Hardy, by the way? Who is he? Well, David Hardy actually has a pretty good uh, resume. He's mm-hmm. a former uh, uh, naval officer. He was actually on a uh, uh, a frigate, uh, a, I believe a nuclear frigate, um, and I can't remember how high up he rose with regards to actual uh, deployment duty and so forth. But then he uh, he followed his way into the JAG unit, which for people who don't know is actually the legal arm uh, of the United States Navy. Mm-hmm. So, and he was, he was appointed to his current position in 2002, so that would be under the Bush administration. How I, uh, however, I believe his appointment had been outstanding, uh, prior to President, uh, then Bush, uh, coming into office. So, I believe his appointment was put up by, uh, former President Clinton, but, he wouldn't- but it was a he wouldn't be the first yeah. person to get corrupted by the Clintons, who, you know, we heard about Comey as, oh, Mr. Clean, and then we learned a lot more about him. So this is a pattern I've seen, like people who may have been good, when they're tested with this, you know, under fire, which is essentially what this is, they become, you know, corrupted themselves, even if that may not have been their original intention. Well, you're absolutely correct, and I think this brings about, you know, as we go back to using these these uh, terminologies of the deep state, 
which you know is aka known as the deep swamp. Um, you know, they, they and it goes throughout the intelligence community and the legal community. Which to me, until you until you uh, you know, undo those dams. Uh, you're going to have trouble uh, draining the swamp elsewhere yeah, um, absolutely. In, in addition. And, and, and you bring up the good point, too, because direct, former FBI Director Comey was also appointed to that position under Bush. Yep. And, and here's the thing. It, it, the corruption is so deep that I don't even think, even though I believe it, it has more, without a doubt, more Democratic label than Republican, it, it, it almost doesn't matter to the uh, to an extent anymore as to the political party labeling because it's as if everybody is now part of the same fraternity slash sorority. That has been so, a big wake up call over the last year or two. That's for sure. Oh, w- without a doubt, and and so I, I would you know again recommend that people. Uh, I, this is the other thing about Mr. Hardy's conclusion. Now, we have 62 million-plus people, almost 63 million, uh, uh, of the electorate that voted for Donald Trump Mm -hmm. as president and uh, obviously won the Electoral College. And so, and his, one of his big things was draining the swamp. One of his big things was ending this corruption. Uh, one of his big, his big things was pretty much self-funding his own campaign so he wasn't beholding to anybody. So, with all of those things, even though 63 million people have not filed a Freedom of Information Act asking for these investigative files, emails, et cetera, whatever the FBI has, quite frankly, on Hillary, to be released, it, 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 it should be quite obvious to even uh, the most average of citizens that if 63 million people voted for President Trump yep. and in drain the swamp and ending the corruption was part of his campaign, there lie 63 million people who I do believe have sufficient if- interest in this matter and being uh, having the matter yep. released publicly. Oh, it's a joke. Um, it's a joke um, that there's not any interest in this. Please, I'm sure a lot of Democrats, Bernie supporters, would like to get this information too. I mean, it's such a joke. I mean, the question I have is whether Trump uh, is trying to drain the swamp, but he realized it's too big even for him, or if maybe he was just insincere. I don't know. Well, I think he has an interest, but I would uh, I would urge his chief of staff, Mr. Kelly, to put him on to priority one, which is. First off, I believe in the LIFO method, as a, particularly as it relates to former President Obama. And when I say LIFO mem- uh, 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 philosophy, that's last in, first out uh, mm-hmm. for non-accountants. Uh, yeah. And in, in, in essence, that means basically get rid of every single appointee that Obama made uh, that you possibly can or, uh, it, during the entirety of his administration. Mm-hmm. Um, literally, that's that's a, a starting point. Plus, the fact is that uh, President Trump has a number of appointments that are open that he can get to and that he needs to get to. I understand part of his reasoning, which he disclosed the other day for having not done so, and he's correct to, to an extent. And he said the size of government is too great. We don't need all of those bureaucrats, and that's that's fine and dandy. But I would still get rid of those that are in powerful positions within yep. the uh, from Obama appointees. Yep. Um, but I also wanted to mention before I forget here. I, I, yeah, I think we only have about there a minute or two, so uh, let's make sure we get to this. That's all right. Yep. No problem. I just wanted to make sure that anybody you know from your listening audience that would like to add into this to the the process of actually filing. A Freedom of Information Act uh, to the FBI is is not too difficult, and oh. so what I'd like them to do is the, the the place to go is a portal, and you can also navigate around it and find out Mr. Hardy's contact information. You can actually get the phone number to his department in RIDS, which again is the uh, uh, Records Information and Dissemination. But if you go to the following website on your you know your uh, search line to E F O I A. Again, that's Echo Foxtrot Oscar Indigo Alpha. Dot FBI. Dot gov. It'll get you to the electronic page that you need to be at, where you can actually file the Freedom of Information Act request electronically, so you don't even have to do it via snail mail. Oh. And uh, yeah, and and you can just basically 
lean in on the David Hardy denial as being inappropriate and not in the best interest of the American people, um, and uh, that you further support Mr. Ty Clevenger and his original request that all matters relating to the investigation uh, of Hillary Clinton, including but not limited, uh, limited to the emails and any other investigative files, uh, be released in the public interest. Great to know, and hopefully the FBI isn't totally compromised, uh, but it may well be. Anyhow, Tim Westhoff, remind people, uh, oh, oh, I'll remind people, they just follow you on Facebook, Timothy Westhoff on Facebook, and uh, appreciate your coming on Backlash again. This was very interesting, very interesting. Not good, but interesting. Well, <laughs> true, true, I mean, you were good. Don't get good me wrong. Part, but the uh, you know the <laughs> corruption is not a good thing for our country. Uh, any final thoughts uh, before I let you go? No, I just think that uh, that that has to be mission one in, in the entirety when it comes to government related matters because everything else uh, will become uh, obstructionism itself by the deep state. And uh, it's clear that in order to drain the swamp effectively, we have to start with those parties that are supposed to protect the American people, but are clearly, in fact, protecting the swamp itself. And that's the FBI and the DOJ. Tim Westhoff, thanks for coming on Backlash today.